in this video i'll cover with you on supply we'll be looking into what is supply the law of supply i'll be illustrating to you the supply curve and we'll be also looking into how to derive the market supply curve we'll also discuss the determinants of supply and lastly uh, we will look into the difference between change in quantity supply versus change in supply now what is supply again we need to understand these two concepts from the producer perspective willingness and ability when we talk about willingness here okay from the uh, producer perspective from the supplier perspective it means that the supplier is prepared he wants to offer this particular product and when we talk about ability it means that he has the financial means to produce this product yeah therefore supply is the willingness and ability of the producer or supplier or seller to produce a particular product let me share with you the supply curve so let's plot the supply curve we can see on the y-axis we have price and on the x-axis we have quantity okay and we have denoted dollar sign over here and the quantity here is amount from the table here we can see when the price is one dollar the quantity supplied is 10 yeah so let's plot yeah and when the price is two dollars the quantity supplied here is 20 and when the price is three dollars the quantity supplied here is 30 and if we connect all these points okay let's put this as point a point b and point c we will eventually get the supply curve yeah and if you see the supply curve is outward sloping yeah and it has a positive relationship between price and quantity as the price increases the quantity supply also increases now moving into law of supply we need to understand here other things equal if price rises quantity supply rises and if price falls quantity supply falls so there is a positive relationship between price and quantity supply now we will derive the market supply curve so we have two firms that are supplying pasta we have firm one and firm two we assume in this country these are the only two firms that supply pasta so at price two firm one will supply let's say we denote this as s1 will supply 40 packs and then firm 2 supplies 50 packs now these are the individual supply curve how do we get the market supply curve the market supply curve yeah is the summation okay of the individual supply curves yeah where the supply okay the market curve is equal to s1 plus Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, it's S2 here. Yeah. So, we plus 40 with 50, we get 90. Yeah. So, technically, we can see over here that at price 2, the quantity supplied okay, for pasta is 90. So, this is how we derive the market supply curve. The market supply curve is the summation of individual supply curves okay what are the determinants of supply there are several we have price of the product itself we have price of other products that will influence the supply we have the input prices technology producer expectations taxes and subsidies which is more of a policy mechanism here and number of sellers okay let's look into the the first determinant uh, of supply is price of the product itself so let's say if the price increases for this product from p0 to p1 now what will happen is that the quantity will increase from q0 to q1 so when price increases the quantity will increase so what happens here is that there's a movement along the supply curve from a to b here so technically 
changes in the price of the product will cause a movement along the supply curve. For example, let's say if the price now decreases from P1 to P0, the quantity will decrease from Q1 to Q0. So that's the first determine the price of the product itself. It doesn't cause any shift. It's just movement along the supply curve. The next determinant here is price of other products. Let's say, in this particular example, as a producer, you're producing whiteboard markers. And you find the price of permanent markers. The price increases. Now, as a producer, you'll find that producing permanent markers will give you a greater profit. Yeah? So what you will do now, you will switch your production from producing whiteboard markers to permanent markers. You have to take note over here that when as a producer you're switching to another product, the product must employ similar production techniques, uh, resources, inputs, workers and so on. Probably the change here might be slightly but not a major changes. Yeah. So if you switch to the, produce, uh, to the production of permanent markers, then the supply of whiteboard markers will decrease shift to the left automatically the quantity will decrease to q1 so another determinant of supply is input prices yeah inputs are all those uh, raw materials uh, labor resources everything that you use in the production of your product yeah so let's see if your input prices increases Okay, for example, the salary that you have to pay to your workers increases. Or the raw materials, let's say, that you want to use to produce a marker pen increases. What happens is that if the price increases, it means your cost of production is also going to increase. So increasing the cost of production is actually going to be burdening the producer. Okay, So in that case, the supply is going to decrease or shift to the left from S0 to S1. And this is going to cause the quantity to decrease from Q0 to Q1. Let's say your cost of production decreases. Now that will shift the supply to the right. Where your quantity now will increase from Q0 to Q2 here. Yeah. So this is how the um, cost of production or input prices yeah, works. And somewhat similar determinant, okay, which works in a similar way, is technology. Now what happens is that technology allows the producers to use fewer resources. Why? Because a good technology will reduce your defects, okay, it will be more efficient and so on. So using fewer inputs, it means lower cost of production. Yeah. So improvement in technology will assist you to reduce the cost. Therefore, supply will increase, shifting to the right from S0 to S1. Therefore, your quantity, okay, supply will increase as well. Moving to another determinant is producer expectation. Now, let's say if the producer expects the price of this particular product to increase. Let's say we are talking about whiteboard markers. If the producer expects yeah, we are talking about future. If he expects that the price of this marker pen is going to increase in the future, he will reduce the supply now. Yeah, because it will be better for him to sell in the future where he'll be able to get more profit. But let's say if he expects that in the future the price is going to go down, then he will increase the supply now, shifting to the right. Yeah. So that is future expectation. And we look into another determinant which is taxes and subsidies. Okay, let's talk about tax first. Now, tax is a burden for the producer. Tax increases the cost of production for the producer. So if government imposes higher tax, if the tax increases, it means the cost of production is increasing. Therefore, supply will shift to the left. And let's say in the same uh, policy methods here, we're talking about subsidy. Okay. 
if subsidy government subsidy is an incentive if the government is giving more subsidies it means that the subsidies will assist the producers to reduce their cost of production therefore supply will increase it will shift from s0 to s1 yeah? and automatically the quantity will increase as well and the last determinant that I would want to discuss with you is the number of sellers. Okay, the number of sellers that are in the market selling the particular product. If there's more people selling whiteboard markers, it means the supply of marker pen is going to increase. Therefore, there will be more quantity supply. Okay, and at the same time, if the suppliers are going to reduce in the market, then obviously the supply is going to shift to the left. Yeah, so this is pretty much about the determinants. Yeah, I've almost discussed with you eight determinants over here. And lastly, let's look into change in quantity supplied versus change in supply. So let's look into the first one first, yeah, which is change in quantity supplied. Now, change in quantity supplied will take place when there's going to be change in the price of the product. Let's say in this case here now, we know that the price was P0, quantity Q0. Let's say price increases from P0 to P1. And quantity will also increase to Q1. So can you see its movement along the supply curve from point A to point B? And let's say if the price reduces to P2, then quantity will decrease to Q2. That means moving from point A to C here. So technically, we can see Changes in the price, price going up or price going down, will cause movement along the supply curve and it will cause change in quantity supply. So the quantity supply will change either from Q0 to Q1 or Q0 to Q2. So this only happens if there's going to be change in price of the product. Yeah, We will say movement along. Okay, It's movement along the supply curve. Now, let's say if there's going to be change in determinants other okay, than the price, uh, which I've discussed with you earlier, okay, such as pro uh, price of other products, input prices, technology, uh, producer expectations, taxes and subsidies, and number of sellers. If any of these determinants are going to change, then it will cause change in supply. Let's pick one. Let's say input prices are going to increase. Therefore, automatically, the cost of production is also going to increase. This will shift the supply curve to the left from S1 to S2 here. Okay, so therefore, we can see now what has happened is that it's changed in supply. The supply has changed from S1 to S2. Yeah, and we will call this change in supply. Now, let's see. Uh, let's pick up another example. So let's say if the government is giving more subsidies, if the subsidies increases, it means that the cost of production is also going to decrease. If the cost of production decreases, then we know supply will shift to the right from S1 to S3. So you see, in this case here, if there's going to be okay, any changes in other determinants, then the supply will either shift to the left or to the right. And we will call this change in supply. So therefore, it's very important for you to know the difference between change in quantity supplied and change in supply.